here it is. The star of today's walk, the Loughton Brook. This is just around the corner from Loughton Station and uh, I'm going to follow it from here back up to its source or try and find its source which I believe is somewhere high up in Epping Forest. So here we go, Brook Road and the Loughton Brook runs behind these uh, quite grand houses here. Beautiful day today. Didn't really want to go too far from home, want to stay relatively local. And I have uh, been meaning to do this for a while. I've walked along the bottom part of the forest following the Loughton Brook with my, my family and not videoed it. So today seems like the perfect time to do that. And this, this uh, walk will take me up towards Wake Valley. And then who knows, maybe we'll just turn around and come back. Maybe we'll carry on. But the point is to find the source of the Loughton Brook. Look, here it is. <laughs> There's more Loughton Brook. So the Loughton Brook is running behind the backs of these houses here on the right. I wonder if anyone's got it at the bottom of their garden. That must be lovely to have a brook at the bottom of your garden. Can't beat a bit of suburban river hunting. I'm about to cross over the high road now. So this alleyway here, Gould's Alley, I think the, uh, the brook cut across this alleyway. Let's go have a look. So I hope that it doesn't quite cut across but you can see it there. It runs underneath the alleyway. There you can see the shimmering water through the chain link fence. So we're up here on the high road now. I think I've got to walk back on myself a little bit to pick up the, uh, the brook near the forest. down Forest Road. You can see the forest looming up ahead there. This is the classic approach into the forest from Loughton for me. And at the end of this road we meet again the Loughton Brook. It runs behind these houses here. The Oaks Pub Loughton. Once an institution in this part of the world. Now it's uh, all boarded up ready to be, well I hope not demolished. I went in there once after a walk a few years ago and walked straight into Peter Crouch. So this is the point which the Loughton Brook emerges from Epping Forest. It starts its journey through the streets. I much prefer to be doing this in the reverse direction. And the Loughton Brook either runs past or feeds a number of ponds and this is one of them. There's at least three or four along the way. I should give a mention at this point, I'll give some credit to uh, Spaceship, or Spaceship Mark, wonderful uh, musician and sound maker, who um, made a concept album called A Prospect of Loughtonbrook, completely inspired by this little streamlet here. And it's in the sleeve notes to that album that Mark mentions the source of the Loughtonbrook as being at a Wake Valley Pond. And he uh, makes ambient recordings of the water as it runs down through the forest. It's a really beautiful piece of work. I will link to it below. Highly recommend that. This is one of my favourite little sections or little meanders of the Loughton Brook. I believe that a bend in a river like this or a stream is called an oxbow, I think. I could be wrong. It's amazing how such a small little watercourse can create such dramatic landscapes like that. Isn't that beautiful? I wrote a little blog post about the Loughton Brook last um, summer. When I was looking for some information 
couldn't find a great deal, but it does crop up as a case study either on the GCSE or A-level geography paper, which I thought was really interesting. I think somebody had done an environmental study and then that formed the basis of a question that students all around the country were studying. That's a little brook that runs through Epping Forest and down through Loughton. So this wouldn't be an Epping Forest walking video if I didn't make reference to uh, this amazing book, Epping Forest with Maps, by Edward North Buxton, the famous Buxtons of Leytonstone. I think this was originally published in the uh, 1880s or something. My version you can see is from 1923. I love this book. And, uh, one of the best things is the maps. And this is the map that relates to where we are today. So I don't think we've actually made it onto this map yet. But we're going to come along the bottom here. You can see. And uh, follow Blattenbrook up to here. And you can see we're going to go up here. Wake Valley Pond. So it's not a particularly long walk, but a very nice one. It says, uh, it says so much about my sense of direction that after I turned off and went up the hill, somehow I got turned round and I was actually heading back the other way because I was quite keen not to get misled and end up following the stream up to a different source, it's a different rivulet, not the Loughton Brook. Of course it should be easy to see if you're going the right way because you're going against the flow of the water and uh, suddenly I found myself <laughs> going with the flow of the water. It's shocking. Anyway, luckily I'm on the right track now. This is an unusually straight stretch of the brook, isn't it? I think I've walked through this part of the forest before. You always manage to bypass it. It's really beautiful, isn't it? There are so many uh, Epping Forest references. Will Ashton wrote a whole book about them called Strange Labyrinth. One of my favourite little lines comes from American Smoke by Ian Sinclair when he goes off to the redwood forest of California to meet the great uh, beat poet Gary Snyder. And one of the first things that Schneider asked Sinclair amongst the giant redwoods of California was how is Epping Forest? Is it still there? Is it still alive and well? I love that. I love Gary Snyder in the redwood forest of California thinking about Epping Forest. <laughs> point is Jacob Epstein, the great artist, sculptor and painter who moved out to uh, Baldwin's Hill, Loughton and spent many a day in the forest painting various scenes here. When Mark called his album a prospect of Loughton Brook, I wonder if he was Thinking of this particular view is marvellous, isn't it? So the Loughton Brook coming out from under this bank that's been put here around one of the ponds. This is Baldwin's Pond. I'll check on the map. Yeah, this is Baldwin's Pond. And the Loughton Brook continues on the far side, I believe. I 
think this is where the mountain brook joins Baldwin's Pond. And up here, I think, is Great Monk Wood. From memory, I think it's something to do with uh, this wood belonging to the, the monks of Waltham Abbey. Certainly them having rights to collect wood here. Can you imagine them walking down from Waltham Abbey to collect wood and carry it all that way back? Wow, it's really swampy through there, isn't it? Kind of Yoda-like. What is the name of Yoda's planet again? I can never remember. Anyway, I can imagine a, a crashed X-Wing fighter in there and Yoda in there foraging for food. Like I found some dogs back there ransacking someone's picnic. Here it is. Slicing through the undergrowth. You'll often uh, hear me talk about a walk being therapeutic. And yeah, although I do often mean that in the kind of uh, being therapeutic to your whole being. I was feeling really ill this morning, I was sore throat and aching limbs and all I wanted to do was go back to bed and go to sleep but I forced myself to come out here today and I feel so much better. Obviously I'll probably feel like crap tomorrow <laughs> but for today <laughs> it's worked. What Richard maybe calls nature cure, although that's mostly in the mental health context. about some proper <laughs> kind of bushwhacking, river hunting down through here. Quite wild this section. Fallen trees everywhere. I mean look up here look. All those fallen trees there. Something through the trees here. Over there that's the point at which the Lauten Brook comes down from the Wake Valley and which we start climbing up towards the Wake Valley. Let's find the, let's find the brook first. So here it is emerging from the bottom of the hill down from the Wake Valley. So we're gonna follow this now up the hill to the source. It was an exciting moment when you get nearer to the source of a stream or a river, you get a bit of a tingle. can't be many finer things than a brook dropping down out of a hill, gurgling away through the landscape. Almost feels like uh, the essence of life itself. sense the source is getting nearer. Not far to go now. I hope I can find something which uh, indicates the source. Bloody hell, it's starting to rain out of nowhere. So I can hear the road up there through the trees. And that is where the source is, somewhere near that road. Well, it's just a mere trickle here. Whether this is the source or not, I don't know. This is the way to the Wake Valley Pond. As you can see, there is another little branch that goes off up there. That seems to go in the opposite direction. Spaceship Mark did talk about a pipe running, coming out from underneath the road that he thought could have been the source, so if so that will be up there. You can see the road, cars zooming past. Let's have a look. 
So here's a pipe under the road, but it appears to be completely dry, doesn't it? Now, look, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert about these things. But it could be when looking at the map, there's so many little rivulets join up to form the, the Louton Brook. And it could be a watershed up here because you've got the ponds. You get a number of springs gurgling to the surface, then running down the hill to form that brook a little bit further down. Like that muddy patch down there looks like it could be uh, one of the origins of the Louton Brook. There's another kind of pipe up here. Yeah, this feels a lot more likely. You can see it's wet, and there's the pipe and the muddy trail that leads into this chasm so the stream can flow underground and then emerge further down in the forest before it makes its journey down to the river Roding on the other side of the streets of Loughton. This kind of fits the description of what Mark wrote in the liner notes of his, uh, of his album a Prospect of Loughton Brook, a little pipe beneath the road. I feel like I owe it to the Loughton Brook to say a few words, to say something really profound. The car, I think it speaks for itself, isn't it? It's lovely, it has such a modest little bit of moisture emerging through the ground, through the mud. It creates that really beautiful landscape with those meanders that we walked through earlier. That ends up as a question on the GCSE geography paper that ends up in a painting by the famous uh, Jacob Epstein ends up lodged in the mind of the great poet Gary Schneider out there in the California Redwoods and it all comes from this little opening in the ground this little pipe, this trickle of water so actually take my speech from the other pipe and move it over here. I think this is the source of the Loughton Brook. I think my little speech holds still. I like, I could have cheated and done it again over here and pretended that I was saying it here. But that's not really a modest little trickle out of the ground, is it? And that little rivulet up there does feed into the Loughton Brook. <laughs> I think this is the genuine source of the mountain brook here. Uh, this needs no extra work. Well, thanks for coming with me. On what, <laughs> not a very long walk, but it turned out to be a real cracker, didn't it? A real, it's something really special when you get back to the source of a river or a stream. And no matter how small, no matter how short that river is, uh, I think the mountain brook's probably maybe only five miles long, four and a half, five miles long. Um, but you just, there's something essential about getting back to the source, isn't there? I think the next video is the hundredth in the walking vlog series. Um, I still haven't decided where to go yet. Thanks for all your amazing suggestions. Thanks for coming out on these walks with me. It means an awful lot to me. See you on the next one.